Red Blue JD. Thank you for the introduction. Um, we have uh, one last point about uh, climate engineering. So, um, climate engineering uh, um, is is also um, a good thing to to keep sustainability in cities or to get sustainability in cities. Um, we have here the the typical triangle for sustainability people or uh, socializing or social living, um, profit, profit and planet, and climate engineering is helping for getting comfortable housings. So when you have comfortable housing, you can get a higher rent, and also the people who are working or living in there um, feel somehow better. Um, and energy effic efficiency is good for all three, all three because you have more resource uh, efficiency, you um, save a lot of money uh, for air conditioning, for example, or cooling and heating. And even though you have less air pollution for producing this energy. Um, what we did now and what is climate engineering today? Uh, we saw in the ancient times they had a lot of time to practice and to work on their buildings over generations to create perfect buildings. But nowadays these buildings changed. We have more story buildings, we have hotels, and we have uh, somehow another other usage. And so we don't have the knowledge from our generations how to build these buildings because they are totally new. And uh, to not waste so much time on getting knowledge by try and error, we can use today computers and software to calculate the indoor climate of rooms or of housing. Um, it's based on mathematical uh, models and physical uh, correlations. These physical correlations we found out uh, by uh, studies and nowadays uh, companies are producing softwares who can calculate uh, the climate of a building um, for each building that you want. You can even calculate for uh, a car, for example. It doesn't have to be a building. And they also did research on comfort of hum human beings. Um, an example is here the ASHRAE 55. Here's here they somehow try to define what is comfortable for human beings. And based on that, we did calculations. Um, and at first, we have to take the climate of Chigali and put it uh, in the software. So uh, I will give you a short overview of what we found out about the climate in Chigali. So the temperature is an average over day and night of 21 degree. Uh, over the day it's uh, 23 degree and at uh, night it's 18 degree and it's somehow stable over the whole year so you don't have uh, cold summer or hot, hot, uh, hot summer or cold winter uh, it's stable over the year and uh, humidity is, uh, is changing so you have uh, high humidity in rainy season and uh, low humidity in the dry season um, then we come to the solar uh, radiation. Um, here we have higher direct radiation in the dry season and higher diffuse radiation in the dry season and the rainy season uh, because um, there are more clouds in the rainy season and then you have diffuse radiation from the sun. But the direct radiation always has more energy because it's coming directly from the sun. Um, then we choose two days, one typical day for the rainy season. Um, here we see the temperature is somehow stable over day and night, so we are around 22 degrees. During the day it's a little bit higher at 24, and during night a little bit lower at 20 degrees. And the solar radiation is mainly diffuse. Uh, in this day we only we had cloud, clouds the whole day, um, but there are also other days in this. Uh, this research. Then we have a typical day in dry season. Here it's somehow changed. So we have uh, very hot temperatures 
uh, up to 20 or hot temperatures up to 28 degree during the day and uh, 14 degree during the night and we have high solar radiation which is the cost for the hot temperatures during the day and at night uh, we have radiation between the earth and the clear sky and clear sky has minus 40 degrees so at night the the air and the ground is cooling down so we have a colder night in the dry season um, because uh, there are no clouds who prevent this radiation uh, between sky and ground and so we get uh, cool, cool nights around 14 degree and now we come uh, to, the comf to, to the comfort all these red dots you see in this diagram are is one hour in Chigali and uh, on the x-axis -ax -x we have the temperature and on the y-axis we have the absolute humidity and in this corner or in these uh, boxes um, dots which are in these boxes are comfortable for human beings and so we see uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the hours in in Chigali are inside this box um, it's sometimes somehow too cold sometimes too humid and sometimes uh, too warm um, and the, the goal now is to get for a building is to get all these dots into the box um, but thermal comfort is not only humidity and and temperature it's also uh, uh, the, the supplied and exhaust hair for example when it's uh, there's somehow a wind in the room it's uh, okay for human beings that it's somehow hotter or when uh, the temperature is not only the temperature of the air it's also the temperature of the ceiling wall and floor because human beings are always radiating between other other stuff around so or bodies in general are radiating uh, and changing energy by radiations um, so in this case it has to be calculated what we call the operative temperature that's the average of the of the ceiling wall and floor temperature to the air temperature uh, another impact on the on the uh, comfort is the clothing, clothing and the activity level um, of the human beings who are inside these rooms and then we start with, started the first calculation on a two-story re residential building um, we have uh, three rooms on the ground floor the storage room, toilet and a living and cooking room um, on the first floor we have a child room, uh, ch children rooms and a parents room, a bathroom and the floor um, the usage is four to five people uh, it's cooking they are cooking every day twice so for lunch and dinner um, we have electrical light and the ventilation is only done by window openings or ventilation bricks and as building parts we have the ground floor uh, slab made of concrete with the U value of 2.4 these uh, U-values give an impact how much energy uh, in form of heat can get through a wall or through a roof or the ground floor slab. Uh, the exterior walls are made of um, CSEB, that's uh, compressed stabilized earth bricks and uh, the floor is made of concrete, windows, we put single glazing and as roof uh, corrugated metal sheet and then we put all this in, in our software and calculated for each hour in the whole year what is the result or what is the, the comfort inside these rooms and um, these two diagrams you see the temperatures the unmet hours of heating and cooling the relative humidity and the PPD um, the operative temperature so and on the on the x-axis you see the rooms 
The storage toilet and living and cooking room are on the ground floor and the other rooms are on the first floor. And with the uh, maximum, maximum measured uh, temperature, we see a difference in the ground floor and in the first floor. Um, and we also see it in the PPD. The PPD is the protect, protected uh, percentage of people who are dissatisfied in these rooms based on temperature or humidity or something like that. And, and it's, so it means uh, as average over the whole year in the child room, 17% are dissatisfied in this room because it's too hot or too cold or something like that. Uh, we also see it in the unmet uh, cooling and heating hours. Um, so in of 8,700 8, hours uh, of the year, in 1,500 hours, you would need heating systems to get the uh, right temperature or the comfortable temperature in this, this room. And then we uh, did a lot of change, but I sh uh, for example, the window size, the orientation, the shading over the windows or something like that. But, but one, uh, one thing we did uh, was helping most, and that was an insulation of the roof. We put a six centimeter of a straw panel under the corrugated metal sheet. Um, you also can put uh, extra ceiling with space for air um, and ventilation bricks, but um, it has the same effect but with uh, an insulation, you, um, you have more space of your roof, you have more space in the room. And um, so we decide to show this one. Um, and as we can see, the, the uh, maximum temperature is going down in the top floors um, because there's no uh, solar input through the roof because with the, with the straw panel, um, now we have an insulation against this heat from the sun and we don't have that much overheating than before. The PPD is also lower, for example, in the children child one room. Before we had 70% who are dissatisfied over the whole year. Um, now it's 9%. Um, the, by the way, the best value you can get in PPD is 5%. Because um, always when for someone it's getting perfect, for someone it's already too cold. So you cannot get a better value than, uh, than 5%. Um, yeah. So these comfortable measurements are, are not very, very strict for one for himself. So you, you don't find yourself in, in these calculations but it's an average of a, a lot of people in uh, big researches. Um, but I will tell you more about that at, uh, later. Then another building we were calculating was uh, the school in Agatare. Um, it's the primary, primary school. We calculated three classrooms. Um, the usage is a school. There's one teacher with 35 to 40 students inside. It starts at 7 a.m., ends at 5 p.m., and there's one hour lunch break. Um, we have no electrical light, and ventilation is only through ventilation bricks and windows. And the building parts are nearly the same. Oh, yeah, they are the same as in the, in the building before. And now we have a special look on, on uh, one day. It's one day in the dry season because here we have the highest uh, temperature difference between night and day. And we see, uh, we show the temperature and also the PPD, the PPD in blue and the temperature in red. And we see in the morning people are dissatisfied like 60% because it's too cold, because we have 15 degree, uh, no, uh, uh, 18 degree. So 18 degrees, uh, some are too cold. Then it's get, the temperature rises and the PPD is going down until 10. And then it's also rising and rising and rising. And then we have problem of overheating. So people are dissatisfied because the temperature is too high in this room. Here we uh, 
again added a, a straw panel in the roof and we fixed the problem of the, of the overheating in the, during the uh, afternoon. Um, but we still have uh, two cold mornings. Um, we tried to put another straw panel and double it, but the effect is very uh, low. So we have 5% less of people who are dissatisfied because it stays somehow warmer during the night. Um, but it's not, not uh, it's also too cold in the morning. Um, and then we remove the ventilation bricks because through the ventilation bricks we have uh, ventilation at night and the cold air from outside can come into the, the room. And in this case, we have over the whole night, the temperature is going lower very slowly compared to before. And when we open the windows in the morning, it's going down, but it's already going up because the, the walls are still warm, the roof is still warm. And so we have for a short time 15 or 17 percent of people who are dissatisfied, but then we have, uh, uh, we have satisfied students for the rest of the day. Um, the next building we were looking at is an office building. Uh, these calculations took somehow longer because it's a bigger building. We uh, first did a building in east-west orientation. Um, it's an office building and it's located in Chigali. We have uh, offices for six to eight people, um, a floor in each, uh, in each floor and a staircase. Um, the floors are divided uh, by different window to wall ratios. We have 90% in the ground floor, 40% the first floor and 20% in the second floor. We, we wanted to see the difference. Um, and the usage is, uh, as I said before, six to five occupants. We start uh, with working at seven and at five. Um, and we put, in this case, we didn't uh, put ventilation by windows or ventilation bricks. We put ideal cooling, heating and ventilation to see how much energy is consumed in these houses when we want to have these buildings, uh, uh, a comfortable office building. And we also put in one computer per occupant and electrical light because computers are producing heat and we wanted to see if this has an impact on the building. Um, as materials, we used nearly the same again. And then uh, here we show you the, the energy demand. So we need uh, 65 kilowatt hours uh, per square meter for cooling. The next biggest part is the ventilation for, for running the ventilator. Then we have the equipment, these are the computers. And then we have a small part of heating. I think nobody would build this heating um, because maybe it's in the mornings and, uh, but uh, it's somehow uncomfortable. And therefore we get, a, we get 126 kilowatt hours per square meters in total with a price of $22 uh, dollar cents per kilowatt hour we have. 27 or 28 dollars per square meter per year for the whole building. These are 33,600 dollars per year only for the energy for running cooling, heating and ventilation and the equipment. Um, therefore, we also have fixed cost and maintenance and service for the, for the ventilation, heating and cooling. And so we see it's a lot of money who is inside of, of this or yeah, somehow is, uh, we have to give for get comfortable buildings. And then we were looking at uh, a book who gave us ideas how we can 
we can change the architecture. Um, we put um, we put overhang to prevent from solar input. We put low absorption on the materials. We put a higher G value for the for the glazing, so less energy from the sun is getting through the through the glass. And then we recalculate it. So um, this is the new. It's still the same building, but we put you. See here, we put uh, a little bit of shading here, and we change the yeah, and we change the orientation uh, from east west to south uh, north, because when you have it east west, the west the sun is always shining inside uh, during the afternoon and the morning, but when you have a south south uh, south north, you don't have this shining into the rooms um, on north and south side. And what we found out that it got worse because uh, so we have uh, two kilowatt hours per square meter and year more and the reason why is we need more heating because it's in the morning it's too cold in these rooms and we have also more costs and um, so we found out that books in which is written how we should build buildings in tropical zones are helping us a lot, but not for tropical zones in highlands like in Rwanda, because we have these cool mornings, especially in the dry season. And um, so uh, now we come to the, the current stage of climate engineering. Um, in Rwanda. Um, the climate data in Chigali um, we have is very good. We have a uh, minimum one weather station per district in, T, uh, in Rwanda. Um, you find it in, uh, at Meteo Rwanda. Um, but we have no da uh, data for the mesoclimates at hillside or for example wetlands because as you Maybe no, in Kigali you have different climates in, in the wetlands, in the uh, valleys, than in the on the top of the hills. Um, and something else we maybe should have in view is global warming. Um, some uh, climate engineers are already calculated with climate data. They guess who is coming in the next 50 years. Uh, to see if the buildings are still good uh, designed for the coming climate. Um, but that's not, um, there's not a very big change vi visible, it's some degrees, uh, and doesn't have a very big influence. But that's why I put it in orange, so it's not that big problem. Then the comfort of room D's inhabitants, um, there is research or it's an American research called ASHRAE and they claim that their comfort level is international applicable. Um, that's maybe right because they have a lot of uh, climatic zones in their country so they have very cold climate in the north and uh, somehow warm or even, even nearly tropic climates in the south. Uh, I think it's subtropical in Miami. Um, but also I found out, uh, I found research, uh, unfortunately not in Rwanda, but in Madagascar, where they uh, found out that 20 degrees is indoor temperature, which is comfortable for these people there. Um, so maybe human beings got, got uh, adapted to their climate. So if you want to do climate engineering in Chigali perfectly, maybe there should be some research on, on comfort for Rwandese these people and not only for, for uh, American or European studies. Then we have uh, the climate engineering. Um, there are many international software products for thermal comfort. 
Um, I found one which is also open source where you can try. Um, but I didn't try it yet. I don't know if it's very applicable. But maybe when you, you do some research, you can find it. Um, but we have, a, uh, we have a lack of knowledge for this software usage in Rwanda. But that's not only a problem in Rwanda, that's all over the world. Um, in the, for example, in Germany, in my country where I come from, the university started now to, to make uh, uh, architecture informatics and uh, try to use this software to calculate uh, indoor climate for, for housings and, and especially high-story buildings. And they often find solutions for climate engineering which you didn't know before could be helping or could be applicable. Um, another problem is that there are already some international publications who can give a first uh, glance on on climate engineering, but especially for Rwanda, there I didn't found uh, something because it's not only the tropical zone, it's also highland zone. And uh, I didn't found a finished research on, on Rwanda, but I will show you later one which is in a draft and you can find it in the internet. Um, Another point I want to, to talk about or want to show you uh, is a small outlook. Um, we first started to, to calculate the climate for the indoor, but as you see here, in, uh, it's a picture in Dubai. Um, they have problems which we call the heat island effect. They have o overheating in the open areas uh, and they get uh, radiant temperature of the housings of 52 degrees and the ground uh, surface temperature is 57 degrees and that's uh, too much overheating and people who don't have an, have an uh, ventilation or an, an cooling in their car can get uh, somehow sick of driving there. Um, we will not get these temperatures in Rwanda because Dubai is low and it's, uh, uh, I think it's desert climate, so it's very hot during day. They have like 35 to 40 degrees in the air. Here, ah, yeah, here we see it's 90, 39 degrees in the air. Um, but it's also can kind of be a problem that you go through the street and it's too hot. You're always sweating with your, with your clothes, for example, you have, have to change. Uh, and so this is also a point uh, when, when you will work in future in designing cities that you, when you design, for example, open spaces uh, to put trees for, for shading, um, for an, an city in must, called Master City, um, they designed special uh, trees somehow to, to make shading in this open space. Um, and at night they close them so that the heat can go away and can co be cooled down by the sun. That's just a uh, small, small impact I wanted to give you. Um, and when you, this, so when you design open spaces, also think about overheating um, and put trees or, or accords like we saw in Italy. And yeah. Uh, if you have uh, later questions or wanted to, uh, want to ask something, you find our context there. Um, and also I want to give you some, some things you can read. So there's one uh, draft about uh, energy and resources a building code for tropical countries. In this building code, they have an extra part for, um, for highlands, uh, like uh, we have in Rwanda or in Uganda. Um, but it's a final draft. It's the final draft, but it's not yet finalized. So there are some parts missing. 
but there are some good ideas for getting a climatically well designed build. From the current current the stage. Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. hillside and wetland but uh, there are a lot of weather stations with meteo and I didn't ask them where they have these mm -hmm. um, but maybe they have them at wetlands at hillside mm -hmm. and uh, but we didn't have the contact yet yet to meteo yeah. measurements that there's a big difference then also the the climate engineering has to change but if the difference is not too big for example it's only one or two degree then you don't have to change the the, the architecture but when it's more then some maybe you you need another architecture for wetlands than for hillsides This idea for, for tropical climate is not helping in highlands. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I even cannot give you percentage. Um, if you do these calculations, you can somehow, so you put the, the shading away and then you see the difference and can calculate a percentage. Um, but in general, um, I don't know if they they did it for maybe other other cities, mm -hmm. but uh, as we don't have uh, have uh, specific climate engineering for Rwanda, we also don't have these these values. Yeah, okay. yeah. you're welcome. Yes. Then uh, I want to, to ask you in your search 
which one you find is the, the strongly affect your design when you want to design to come with the comfort. Which one among those uh, types of uh, types of climate based on uh, size? Yeah. Um, I think all all uh, climates are some important. But uh, the biggest impact is by the macroclimate. So we have the cool climate it's in the north, it's up to minus 40 degree. When we compare it to tropical zone, it's, there's a difference of 60 degrees. So there we have the biggest difference. And when you're looking in a, in a building, you somehow also have to look, um, the most important you have to look is the macroclimate. So what is the climate in the climate zone tropics? For example, if you build a house uh, which is designed in New York, same like here, it would not be, be designed for this climate well. But when you, um, but as smaller as you get in the scale, it's as lower is the difference in, in energy consumption, for example. And so you, uh, like we talked before about the wetland and hillside, how big is the difference? That would be the, the mesoclimate. Um, here, we don't know um, if this difference is important because yet we don't have the data to calculate, but this is something we have to know. But what we know is that we have a difference because between Rwanda and other tropical countries. So what I showed in the office building is that if you use the, the, um, the components which they tell you in these books about tropical uh, climate engineering and tropical zones, if you use these components, it doesn't get better because tropical climate is different when it's on the sea level and when it's in the highlands. And this is something... Uh, so we have to have a look in the mesoclimate, but in the microclimate, we, yeah, it's not that important, but uh, it can, can, can get important when you have special, special uh, components or special things. For example, when you have a PV system, a photovoltaic system, and it's getting too hot, um, you don't have the have get uh, much power. You get more when it's somehow colder. So you can look at the microclimate of the PV system and maybe put it a little bit away from the roof so that air can go in between. Then we have a look at the microclimate. But for the indoor climate of, of housings, uh, you only have to look, I think, at the macro and mesoclimate. smell so this but software yeah. isn't looking at smell the, like you see in the toilet the smell sometimes are from the not bad treatment of the those sheet which are done and I think for the ventilation it is not the problem of the toilet I think the main problem is the how they take care for those toilets the way they clean the the, the stuff they use to clean and 
how to maintain mm -hmm. those two entities. I think it is the problem. It is not the problem of one state. Mm -hmm. But you but you also could look at the microclimate of such a put latrine and how the ventilation is working inside there. And maybe you find something out to prevent the smell going from the pit latrine into the, the room, then going through the chimneys outside. Yeah. But I didn't do research especially on, on pit latrines. It was more of the buildings. But yeah. <laughs> so we cannot do that. Yeah. And it is a, a mechanical problem, yes? This mechanical engineering should solve the problem. It's exactly, it's not an architectural problem. <laughs> and you make more ventilation, you need a mechanical engineering to solve this problem. Or the, this and another thing, because this is the main, maintenance of the destroyers. And all of the destroyers have a problem with the motor. But you... It, it doesn't measure the, the, the smell, that's, the, that's right. But smell is correlating with humidity in these rooms. Mm -hmm. So when you have high humidity in the toilet, you somehow know that there was not ventilation in the last times. And what it's also cal uh, calculating is the age of the, of the air inside one room. So when you can find in the, in the results, in this room, the highest age of air was maybe three hours because window was closed or ventilation was not uh, working at this time. Um, and then you can get a link to, to the smell. more or less energy consumption but uh, until today I couldn't <laughs> because it's somehow difficult because we have these cold temperatures at night and very hot temperatures during day and to figure out to find the perfect perfect uh, perfect architecture for this for this case uh, was very difficult what I tried is to to put insulation everywhere, so on the walls, on the roof, in the windows, I put double glazing. Um, uh, the results were better, but not much. So here, um, yeah, here is something we researchers has to work on. Yeah, and I hope this this uh, draft on uh, it's here. Um, a building code for, for tropical countries where they have an extra part for highlands. I hope, hope it's finished soon and then maybe they found, found something out which can, which can help you. Yeah. Thank you very much for You're welcome. Red, blue, JD.